brothers and sisters from the same mind womb of our Creator. And uh, we are literally His daydreams. And He loves every single one, everyone, no matter even if the worst one. He loves them anyway. They're all His kids. How can you not love your own child, even if it's just gone out and ran through a crowd with hand grenades and, and guns and blowing people up. You're still going to love that kid. You're, you're, you're going to cringe and hate and be mad at what that child has done, but you can't help loving him and did it with that. And accept the punishment for whatever would happen to that That's kid. That's right. And, yes, these are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Look, he's been, he's been, he's been very lenient with us for centuries. And and what have we done? We tossed it aside. Ye are as little G, God, is what the scriptures say. We have the same ability as God without being God. We can daydream things into existence. The phone we're using, the glasses, the false teeth, the car, the house, the furniture, the clothing, all daydreamed in by one individual that got together and put things together. And we today call that technology advancement. See, we're God, big G. But no, 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 no. I even had a story today, Red Elk, where they're cloning animals for food and pharmaceutical use. I mean, how much more do we have to step on, well, on the creator? That's what he's asking. And he is spanking. And every time we go out without taking the garbage out and cut the grass and just go out and walk up and down the street strutting, uh, he, he's going to get more and more fed up. What's it going to take? Kids, you are grounded. And bam, that's it. And it's going to get worse. But, again, he loves us, George. I mean... Uh, and a gappy love that you and I can hardly ever possess. We can. I do. But uh, nevertheless, uh, an, an unconditional love. And if we would just return to him, you know, I, I teach, I've taught, uh, and I sell lessons. On, uh, you know, you can teleport. That does away with airplanes, gasoline, pollution. You can, uh, um, uh, um, you can levitate do. if you need to go across a muddy field. Don't take your Jeep. <laughs> you know, to levitate. My older sister does that. I'd probably go right down into the mud right now. Well, that's only because uh, all of a sudden you realize what you're doing. Like Dieter. He walked down water and then looked down and ah, I can't do that. And <laughs> down he went. went. Down he and, went. But do it again. Get out and do it again. And you'll sink right away. And right away. And do it again. And do it again until finally the second time, hey, I'm staying there. And then you'll sink. But the third time you're able to do that from there on in, it's a piece of cake. Red Elk, uh, I want to make sure that everybody knows your websites. They're all linked up at coasttocoastam.com. And we're with the very special, I'll call them one of the elders, Red Elk and his great vision. When we come back, we're going to talk about these incredible thunderbirds that Native Americans have seen over the years. The Hopi prophecy, earth changes. Red Elk talked about how car factories would close, how iron factories would close. Haven't they happened? He would talk about droughts and floods. They happened. Odd diseases, AIDS. They happen in a moment, Red Elk, with more on Coast to Coast AM. And our special guest tonight, Red Elk, will be back with him in a moment as we talk about Hopi prophecy, earth changes, volcanoes, and, of course, thunderbirds, and so much more on Coast to Coast AM. Red Elk, what can you tell us about the thunderbirds? Were they real creatures? Are they real birds, or are they just some kind of dimensional creature? Well, my brother, first off, if you will allow me to say a couple of things sure. before we get to that subject, okay? Mm -hmm. Number one, do not believe a word I tell you. Nothing. You check it for yourself in your heart, in your own way. 
It's up to you to know whether I am telling true or lying. And um, I'm not out here to lie. So don't take me for the word, you know. All right, that's number one. Number two, uh, we have a tendency to uh, leave lines dangling. Let's go back to how to get visions and dreams and finish that before Thunderbirds. Okay. That all right. All right. If that flash occurs, or if in, in the day, you know, all of a sudden, bang, you, you, you see something. You know it's in the head, but you see it. You just say, sir, is this from you or ma'am or great cosmos or Allah or whatever you want to call the great one? Uh, and if so, this is, say it. You can say it quietly. This is what I saw. I saw, I saw a figure in blue, but that's all I can tell you. Great. If this is from you, clarify that. If it is from him, you'll see that figure again, only more clear. And if you still can't make it out well, say, do that again, please, if this is from you. Bam. Okay. Now, what is it you're trying to tell me, Lord, or Allah, or whatever, all right? And then it goes on. You, you're you starting to catch the vision. Behind those closed eyelids with that flash, a number of times, not the vast majority, but a number of those times, he's trying to get your notice. And uh, you just say, hey, I just saw a red flash as I shut my eyes. Is this from you, Creator? I don't understand it, but that's what I saw, a red flash. Audibly tell him so. Her, it, whatever. And uh, um, if it is, bang, it will come again. What are you trying to say, sir? You know, and and just if if it's going too fast, tell him, hold on, dude. You know, uh, slow this thing down. I, I, you're going too quick. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, and he slows it down, and you're on your way. You're you're catching a vision. In dreams, you you can't do that unless it's a lucid dream, and then you can do that. And I advise you to do it if you need to. But uh, generally, a dream from the Great One uh, is when you wake up. I mean, boy, you remember that dream. Not just a part. You remember it. Are these dreams right out geared to someone's own personal situation or, or broader, like yours has been? Sometimes it's your own personal, like right now. I'm standing here with a beautiful diamond willow from the um, three Indians up in Upper Saskatchewan. Uh, staff, and I think it's four nights ago, it might have been three, but I'm pretty sure it's four nights ago, I was crawling into bed, and it suddenly, bang, you know, I, I get notified. And I said, is this you, Pop? And bang, again. I said, okay, one more time. Bang, three checks. There Always is. check three times. three times, or if you need to. But nevertheless, and uh, I said, what, what is it you're trying to... to uh, you know, get to me too. And dang if he didn't show me a staff that I have, and I use my my walking staff, this diamond willow. And he told me to do something with it. And um, I did that tonight. I went out and I did ceremony, and did it tonight. And just uh, just prior to your introduction to me, I did what I was ordered to do with. And that's between him and me. It was a personal thing. And, uh, um, well, it appears to be working. <laughs> I'll say that much. Uh, what, what he told me it would do, it would basically it would uh, empower you and me as a, a unit for him. So it seems to be going that way. It, it would have gone that way to a point anyway. You know, because this is the way it is between you and me anyway. If uh, someone, Red Elk, is, is uh, you know, full of negative thoughts and, and things like it, will that person be able to accomplish this? Accomplish what? Well, the ability to see, to, to feel things in the future. <laughs> exactly. If wants them to, yes, but he's not going to let them do that until he knows, and he tests you, by the way, until he knows, again, no he, no she, but 
uh, um, until he knows you're serious. You're after him. You hunger to know your maker. And uh, he'll test you sometimes for years. And uh, when you finally turn around and are dead serious, he knows your heart. And that's when you will start receiving these things in, in a big way. But uh, too many are in new age, and they grab on anything. That's oh, boy, true. look what I saw. And they come on your show, and they have the shows, and they write books. And frankly, it's a bunch of crap. And, uh, they, they feel spiritual, and they are. But uh, point your, uh, George, and listeners, take your, your pointing finger and point it straight up, straight up in the air. Please do that right now. And then the finger next to it, point it straight up, and leaving the one straight up. The other one goes up, but it's off the mark. It doesn't hit straight. It just bypasses the mark, and that's what New Age is all about. I agree with that, too. I agree with that. I mean, I love them. And thank God in, in many ways for them, for them. They, but they're, they're getting spiritual knowledge. But what spirit? Can the bad spirit come through at the same time? Oh, sure. That's why we test, test, test. How do you, how do you fight that? How do you prevent that? I test, test, test. Is this of you, Dad? Is, is this... Of you, who are you? Is that you standing there, Jesus? Good Lord, I, I know Jesus. I mean, I know Jesus. I've seen him. We walk together. We chat together. Uh, I know Jesus, but it, it doesn't matter how well I know him. I always says to make sure it is him. Lucifer can come as an angel of light. He can look just like him, and I sure had that happen. But a, a weak person, though, Red Elk, could let evil get through oh well, well certainly certainly but again if they really hunger for the truth which is the creator that if they really hunger they eventually will get out of that crap and i think most people want the truth i i i tend to agree with you but uh in in the new age group they're so pleased I'm so spiritual, I got all this knowledge, blah, 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 and they <laughs> spread it out, and everybody grabs onto it because they're too dang lazy to eat. All right, before we get into some of this Hopi prophecy, which okay. fascinates me, you tell me about the Thunderbirds. What's beautiful birds. Oh, beautiful birds. I've seen them only in, in uh, time travel. Uh, oh, they're huge. They're huge. Are they? Are they... they look like uh, two or three different types of eagles, just like we have, uh, you know, the the, uh, the eagle with the white head, and down down in the uh, the bald eagle. West, they have the all brown eagle, and I think there's there's even a fascinating one in Africa. I don't know about the others, but uh, they're just like that, only enormous. I mean, they, they'd make a Cessna look. By the way, you know what? There was a case, uh, somebody was in a Cessna flying in Alaska, uh -huh. and one of these huge birds came up right next to him. He couldn't believe it. Oh, well, I sure could. It's too bad that, uh, you know, when strange things like this occur, you give them an offering. Thank you for showing up. There was a reason for that being, and that happening. And, you know, uh, pick out a penny, a nickel, or pull a hair out of your head. Hold it up and offer it to him in thanksgiving for witnessing this. You don't know why you did, but it's a gift from the Creator for a reason. And then just kind of toss it over towards him, even though it might land in the Cessna's right-hand seat or whatever he did. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're giving something for something given. It's called exchange of energy. How do we know one of these things won't swoop down and grab people? Oh, uh, they have. <laughs> they have. Oh, they yeah, have. way back yeah. then, yeah. And, and, and they still do occasionally. It's rare, but uh, mostly kids, you know, they, they come in and, and uh, where our eagles today will come down and eat the placenta of uh, calves and calving uh, 